Welcome, Laura. How are you doing? Welcome, Chosi. Did I say that correctly? Wow, Laura, great. So Laura's from the neonatal ICU unit as educator and a nursing instructor. Great. Jerry's from Applied Math and Statistics. Hi, Cho Chosi is from the Dean of Students. Welcome. Am I Chosi? Am I saying that correctly? Great. <laughs> and we have Tara online, Tara Mazovic. She is just going to help with a little bit of the moderation. Um, if you have any questions and I don't get to them, uh, she might be able to answer them quickly. Otherwise, um, if I don't get to them, I will follow up in an email. All right, it is 11 o'clock. I'm going to get started. My name is Nicole Gladke and I'm from Do It Training. And I developed this webinar because I do a few trainings and I started getting questions about um, how other people can do their own trainings and do their own videos, other departments on campus. And I found a way to do this in PowerPoint. And the funny thing that I think is funny is that we, we had this capability in PowerPoint for quite a while. I just didn't know about it. So let me, I'm going to close this up. Oh, we have a few more people. Welcome, Tony. Welcome, Donna. Welcome, Junetta. Welcome, Kate. And we have Lauren. Welcome. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm going to close up this little note. And I'm going to share my screen, which is just going to be my desktop for right now. So I'm starting fresh. Okay. So what I have here is a um, PowerPoint. I'm using PowerPoint 2016. So your screen might be a little bit different depending on uh, what version of PowerPoint you're using. But the menus are generally the same. And um, if you do have any problems, um, I'm more than happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one to help you get started. Um, so I have uh, just a five-slide PowerPoint presentation. And all I want to do is turn this into a video, uh, narrate it, and then turn it into a video, and then maybe put it on YouTube. And then once it's in YouTube, I can do a number of things with it. I can put it on a website. I can put a link to it on Blackboard. I can embed the video into a survey or a form and have people take assessments that way. So let me get started. Um, 
if I go to all you, uh, we're just going to be using one menu item here, uh, slideshow and record slideshow. That's it. That's all we're going to be using here other than um, down at the bottom where I show the whole slideshow. But everything is right here under the slideshow menu. So to begin recording, um, just I'm just going to click on this down pointing arrow and then start recording from beginning. Okay. It brings up a dark screen um, where I can record, stop the recording, replay something. I can look at my notes. I can make the font of my notes bigger. And I can use the notes. Let me just uh, close this for a second. The notes are usually down here under the slide. And I can use these notes as a script for my video. So let me go back to record from beginning and turn on my notes and then make that bigger. Um, down at the bottom you have uh, an eraser tool but you also have these pen or uh, highlighter tools and these you can use to draw on your slide while you're talking. So I'm going to make this, um, I guess, a different color than what you see here. I'll make this green. And um, when I use my mouse, I can draw on my slide if that's useful to you or to kind of highlight points or something like that. Now, to get started, um, you want to make sure you have your microphone plugged in. And then you can click on Settings here if you have PowerPoint 2016. If you don't have PowerPoint 2016, there are other ways, but I'm just going to show you what the current version offers. If you click here, you can select the microphone that you want to use. I am using a microphone headset. It sounds a lot better than the microphone, the internal microphone on your laptop, or at least on this laptop. Other laptops might be different. Down at the bottom here, I can mute my microphone, which I don't want to do since I want to narrate the, the slides. But I can also, if I want to, turn on the camera while I'm talking and recording my slides. I'm not going to do that. I don't want to use up too much bandwidth. Um, so I'm just going to turn that off and leave microphone on. So now I'm going to get ready to record. Um, I'm just going to record these five slides very quickly just as a demonstration. Um, so the question that Tony um, asks, is it available, are all these features available in 2013? No, we don't have this, um, we, we don't have some of these buttons here, okay? But you can get 2016, it is available with our West Campus um, Microsoft license. East Campus users have to check with 444 help but you also have to make sure that your computer can handle that and someone from the help desk will be able to determine that for you. So let me get started recording. Um, for 2016, I click on the record menu. For 2013, I just go ahead and start talking. So now I'm going to get ready to talk. How to make an omelet. When I want to advance the slide in 2016, I can click these arrows or I can just press the space bar on my keyboard. Scramble three eggs. Add butter to a hot pan. Heat thoroughly. Slide your omelet onto a plate. When I'm finished, I hit the space bar. If that doesn't do anything when you hit the space bar, you can hit the escape key to go back to the presentation. <laughs> so Tara says she's hungry. It is breakfast time. I apologize. So now if you look very closely at the slides on the left hand side, you'll see a little tiny speaker on each one. Okay, and that lets me know that the recording has taken place. If I want to redo a slide, I can do that as well. Uh, let's say I want to redo slide number three. Maybe I listened to it and it didn't come out right. I can redo it. 
So all I have to do is click on record slideshow and then click on clear and clear narration on the current slide. Just know that this is the current slide and it's also highlighted on the left hand side. So I'm going to clear that and then I'm going to re-record it record from current slide. It brings up that screen again and then I can start recording. Scramble three eggs. Three. Done. And then I can hit escape to go back. So now I've re-recorded these three slides. By the way, and I forgot to mention this, when you draw on your slides here, if you need to redo it, you can simply by going to clear and um, clear the uh, clear narration on the current slide. This will clear the narration as well as any drawing, or it's actually called inking when you look this up in uh, on a website. So they call this inking, by the way. All right, so now I can play my slideshow and see how it sounds. Uh, when I do this, you won't be able to hear it through this webinar. Uh, only I will, um, but I can assure, I'll assure you if it, if it recorded okay. Okay, I'm not going to play the whole thing because I really don't like listening to my own voice, but I can assure you that it does work. So the next thing I want to do, oh, and one thing I also forgot to mention is that the timings of these slides are automatic by default. So that means when I speak into the, the, the into my mic and then I hit the arrow key or the space bar to advance to the next slide, it um, automatically um, matches the timing. So that way I won't have um, a slide still showing when there's no narration. It, it automatically uses, uses the timings and this is by default. So the next thing I want to do is since this is pretty good, my narration is pretty good, I'm happy with it, um, I can click on File, Save As. This might look a little bit different if you have Office 2013, but I want to save it on my desktop. So I'm going to go to Desktop to make sure it gets saved there. I'm going to call it Egg Movie. And then where it says save as file type, I'm going to change that to MP4. You can see you have a lot of options here. I don't know exactly what they all are, but I do know what MP4 is, and that's a video format that is accepted by um, YouTube. And it's also a video format that can be rendered on uh, most devices like an iPad or an Android device or tablet. So now I'm going to save the egg movie as an MP4 and click on my desktop and click on save. And you may notice down at the bottom it's very small, but here it is creating egg movie MP4. So let's see what questions we have while it's working. So can the timing be reset? It can. Um, it does it automatically, Stephen, um, but if it's something you... Uh, you, you can manipulate the timing or re-record the slide. So Nadia writes, is this available on other versions of PowerPoint? Yes, we've had this capability to narrate slides and um, save them as MP4 since 2010. Um, Laura writes, anytime you add a slide or change the content, can you re-record the recordings and stay with the, the slide numbers or content? So Laura, that's a really great question. Um, when you're doing this, you're creating two slide, two files. You're creating the, the slides with the narration and then the uh, video. So if you needed to add a slide, 
you go to the PowerPoint, you know, that you see that you see right right here, this PowerPoint, add the slide, narrate it, and then save it as a second movie. So you don't have to do um, like redo the movie. Well, you don't have to redo the PowerPoint and all the narrations. You just have to do the narration of that one new slide. Um, you you can rename it as a revision. Um, I would probably, uh, my own opinion would be to delete the old movie and um, have the new movie update with the year or the date or whatever. Um, let's see, Jessica writes, I'm from Visa and Immigration Services and, oh, <laughs> and you ran late. Okay, that's no, no problem. <laughs> um, is addition, uh, so let me see. Um, you can, uh, let's see, Na Nadia writes, is additional slide feature available in other versions? Um, I'm not sure uh, what you mean by that, um, Nadia, if you can um, reiterate that. Oh, to add a slide. Yeah, you can add a slide just like you would uh, with any old PowerPoint presentation, just add a slide. Um, if I didn't answer your question, if I didn't answer any of your questions, please, um, please rewrite them. And so now I'm going back to my PowerPoint. And I'm just going to close this because I got my, um, um, I have my, my movie. It was created. It's on my desktop. I can, if I want to, save this um, or not. I don't have to save the narrations. So I'm just going to minimize this. And then here is my egg movie. This is one I did uh, earlier today to make sure everything's working. Oh, so Laura writes, can some slides not have narration like every other? Yeah, just, you know, just don't talk and um, skip to the next slide. So Christine writes, in addition to MP4, are there other video format types we can create? Yeah, there is a W, I think it's called WMV, um, but um, I, I, I think MP4 is... Um, um, probably the the most useful one. So here is my MP4 egg movie, and it's running. I don't know if you can hear it, but I can hear it. And um, I really don't like listening to it, so I'm just going to pause it. Um, just a couple tips when you are recording. It's good to smile while you're recording because people can actually hear that smile across the wires. Uh, also, uh, try to project your voice. Uh, some people, when they first start recording, it sounds like they're uh, whispering or trying to be quiet. Um, it's a little uncomfortable recording or talking to nobody. I know because I've done it. So um, after a few videos, you'll just get over that. Um, be sure to talk slow and enunciate, and um, and I think let's see, I had some other. That's it. Project your smile, project your voice, articulate, and speak slower. Oh, another thing, another little piece of advice is to make your movies small. Uh, try not to have a two-hour lecture or even a one-hour lecture. I would break up the movies into topics and then you can take all the topics and put them together in a YouTube video or, um, you know, just list them as uh, links, you know, make them three or four minutes, three to five minutes long, uh, the shorter the better. And then that way um, it's, uh, it chunks the information for your audience as well as if you need to redo something or redo a slide, you won't have to redo the uh, entire um, movie. You can just redo what you need to redo. All right, so my movie works and the next thing I'm going to show you is how to put it in YouTube. So with our um, 
with our uh, West Campus email addresses, meaning Google, we have the ability to upload things in our name. If you click on this waffle here, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so everyone can see it. If you click on this waffle, you'll find YouTube here. And if you click on that, It'll ask you to sign in here and it'll say sign in and then just click sign in and it'll automatically um, sign you in. And then to upload your movie, it's so easy. You just click on this little arrow here. And then I'm going to find my movie on the desktop. Here it is, the egg movie, and I'm just going to drag it in. And while it's processing, I can do a few things down here. I can make a more uh, elaborate title. Oops. I can put in a description. I can make this a public video. Let me make this bigger. Sorry. Or I can make it public, or I can make it unlisted or private. If I make it unlisted, that means it won't be found in the search bar here. If I don't want the World Wide Web finding my video, um, I can make it unlisted and then post the, the link to it. The link is right here in like Blackboard or a website, and people who go to the website or the Blackboard or get it in an email will be able to see the video. They just won't be able to search for it up here. I can also add it to a playlist. I'm going to create a playlist called uh, Demos. And I guess I'll just make it unlisted and click Create. So now I can add all the videos I create to this playlist called Demo. And it just groups them together where I can send um, a single link out to this group of emails. I mean, I'm sorry, to this group of videos. But I only have one video here. All right, so I'm pretty much done. I'm just going to copy this URL. And if I wanted to, I can email this out to whoever I want, and they'll be able to view my video. OK. All right, or I can put this in a website or a Blackboard or whatever I want. Okay, so what do you guys think of that? Was that easy? Do you have any questions? One thing I would like to note if um, you're doing all the steps that I showed you and you find it's not recording, um, I found out that, that that's what happened to me. And so what I did was I found out if I just rebooted my computer, um, that took care of the uh, technical difficulties and then I was able to record. So let's see. So we have Chosie can't wait to try it. Great. Uh, Chosie, if you run into any problems, feel, feel free to reach out and I'll, I'll, I'll help you. Um, Stephen writes, what about sizzling sounds of butter? <laughs> uh, you, can, you can add, um, I would have to think about that, but you can probably add some sound effects. We can probably find some if you really needed to. Um, so Nadia writes, what about non-SBU students or if you're doing a conference presentation that you want to offer as part of presentation? So um, non-SBU students or, or basically anyone who doesn't have our email like we do that's attached to YouTube, I mean, you can just, um, uh, you can do it with any PowerPoint and uh, you can log into YouTube and uh, make your own YouTube account. Um, so Donna's got the documentation, great. 
what else? Yes, Laura, absolutely. I mean, so, Laura, sometimes I'm in workshops, so I'm not available then. So what works for me, if you write me a quick email and we set up a date and time and um, I'll meet with you um, virtually. I don't, I don't have to come to your, your desk to help you. So Nadia writes, do you have to create a new account? No, uh, Nadia, if you have a Google account with Stony Brook, you don't have to. Um, but anyone who doesn't have a, a YouTube, you really just need a YouTube account and PowerPoint. Um, so there's one more thing I want to show you if you want to stay. It is 1122. And I want to show you the final product that I have here. So sort of like the full circle. So, oh, oh, and one other thing I forgot to show you. Um, two things I'll show you. Closed captioning and um, the how to make an assessment out of this video. If you want to stay with me, great. If you don't, that's fine too. It'll be recorded and I'll send the recording out later. So if you want to get closed captioning done, you have to go to the Creator Studio. Oh, do I have to save? Yeah, let me hit stay and oh, publish. I have to publish this video. Okay, take two seconds. So I'm going to go and start my closed captioning by going to the Creator Studio. And the way to get to the closed captioning is you have to get to this list of videos. This is the Creator Studio or it's called the Video Manager as well. And if I click on this down pointing arrow, I can get to subtitles and CC. I can also get to it from here if I see that too. And then I can add new subtitles here. And then if I just click English here, and that's it, um, not immediately, but maybe after like 10 minutes or so, uh, YouTube will kindly create its own English subtitles or closed captioning for me. Okay, it's not instantaneous. I thought I was doing something wrong until like I waited a day and then I saw the closed captioning. Let's see if it did it anyway. So I'm going to hit play and turn it on. No, it's not doing it. But if I come back to this maybe in about 20 minutes and click on this, then my closed captioning will appear down at the bottom. Um, this is automatic closed captioning from YouTube. So um, sometimes it's not always correct. If I want to make sure I get really uh, spot on closed captioning, I can upload a script, a text file. I can transcribe uh, my, my typing. So I can, if I click here, and play it, I can type here while it's playing. And while I'm typing, this is genius, it pauses the video. So I can finish my typing, and if I lift my fingers up off the keyboard, it starts playing the video, and then I can type a little bit more. So I was able one time to get a five minute video typed out in about 10 minutes. And I thought, I thought this was um, just a phenomenal tool, okay? But I'm not going to do that now. And um, the next thing I want to show you, if you're still hanging on with me, is the final product. So I have this form, a Google form. It collects email addresses, okay? So when, when you get the, the link to this, It'll collect your email address. It asks you to watch the video, which you can, so I'll just play it for a little bit. I'm pretending I'm watching the video. And then I can click Next and answer a question. If I answer the question wrong, so the question is, what ingredients do you need to make an omelet? If I click Toast, I set up the form to let me know it's incorrect and force the user to re-watch the video. I can bypass that and click Next. 
and then click on eggs, which is the correct answer, and then click next, and it says you are correct, and submit it. Okay, and then what it does here is, I'm going to get to that, in the form, it keeps a record, oops, it's in the trash, uh, take out a trash. So it keeps a record of who took my test and um, so that I know that they took the assessment. Okay, so let's see, I'm going back to the questions. Uh, can the video be shared like other Google Docs and be edited by others? Oh, that's a good, good question. I'm going to say probably not. Um, the editing capability in YouTube is uh, limited. Uh, let me see if there's an option here. So we have, yeah, we already saw that option. Enhancements, you can add enhancements. Ah, I hear my voice again. Um, you can trim some stuff out if you want to. Um, you can change, I guess, some of the color. I don't really use these. And you can add some filters and blurring effects if you want to. <coughs> but I don't really use these. Um, so I would say the editing is, is kind of limited here in, in YouTube. It's not as good as other tools I've used. Um, but unless you trying to think unless you um, but I don't think you can really share it but you know what let me look into that a little bit more and I'll follow up with an email another thing you can do in YouTube is you can add music and this music is free you can ah, you can pick from here you don't have to worry about royalties or or anything like that all right, and you could, this is pretty neat. You can add annotations. So if you wanted to, let me see. Got it. So you can add, what is all that? This is all new stuff to me. I'll look at it later. But there is a way to add annotations just to bring more um, attention to certain points in your slideshow. All right, so back to the questions. Um, Laura says, I saw other languages, are those considered approved by international standards? <laughs> That's a really good question. Um, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Let's see. Um, I can tr try to find out for you, um, but um, I, I don't even know if I'll be able to, uh, to search that for you. But I'll, I'll see what I can come up with. So Nadia writes, what if the language is not correct? Can you use Google Voice to recreate an audio file and attach it? Um, you, you, can, you, can type, you can type your own script and upload it or just type it out in YouTube like I, sh I, show, I showed you before. Okay. Um, all right, so it's now 11.30. Um, I actually showed you all the extra stuff I didn't think I would have time for. And um, unless anybody has any questions, I thank you for coming and have a, a lovely week. And if you try this and um, you need a little of assistance, please reach out to me and we'll set up a date and time and I'll get you started. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I'd love to see what you guys created, so please feel free to send me your links. Thanks, Tara. You're the best. Thanks, Christine. All right, I'm going to sign off in about another 30 seconds. Thank you very much for coming.